Welcome to this tutorial. In this, I'm gonna explain how to use remote events and bundle events. So let's start with remote events. So these are used for example, having a script and put their remote event. So remote event test, for example. Now you don't see really any properties here. You just rename it to what function it should give you. So for example, give player cash or something. Do I have any leader stats? I have cash. Okay, I have leader stats already. So what we now do if we search remote remote we have here three blocks we have two with fire and one with receive receiving is basically for the server script when we use a fire in the local script so if we go here and also search for remote we have fire and receive so if we, we use fire in this case and let's just make a screen ui and a text button put all the stuff in there uh, plus one cache or something And let's make it like that and position it like here. So if we go in here and we use a we left click, so every time we click the GUI button, we will fire the remote event. So we give the path to this, for example. And now we have here five parameters. And there we can insert a number, for example, so one. And if we go now here and put also the path to the thing, we can one have the player move. So this player is only when going from local script to server script. So we actually get the player who fired the remote event. And the first parameter would be an or cache, cache, or add or something. So parameter one is one, and we would get here in variable with the one, basically. We, the same thing goes for firing from the server to the client, so we can send data. So we have fire remote event to client and to all clients. So when sending data from the server to the client, we can maybe fire to every player in the game with fire all clients. Or if you have a specific player, you can use fire remote event client where you need also to insert a player object if you only want to use one player. But I don't really have any example for this right now. So I will continue with this first. So we have here this parameter one, which is our number one. You also can send now tables through remote events, which was not possible since some weeks ago, but now you can which is pretty good because five parameters is not really much. So what we can now do, for example, is get an object property of the player.leader stats.cache. This only works, of course, if you already have leader stats. In some tutorial, I made this leaderboard tutorial here, which creates an leader stats with cache so 
If this does not work, you don't have any leader stats, probably. So we get the current cash velour, which will be cash. Do an addition of the current crash. Yeah, not crash, cash. And just do here cash add, I think I called it. Yeah. And then we just set the object property to the new cache, which we output here. So now, if we will press this plus here, we get one cache. Now you may wonder why we're using a remote event to send an event to the server and not do it in the local script. If we do it on the local script, the cache is only adding up on this client. But for other users or players, we still have the original cache. So if the server script checks for a cache, we still only have 20. So we need to send an event to the server to give us things. Now, one important thing with remote events, this example is exploitable, really easy. So if the if an exploiter just finds this give player cash, he probably thinks like, oh, I can give me now free cash easily. So you would have to somehow make a safety check so people don't exploit your remote events like this could really lead into problems with hackers just so you know what you could do is maybe add another parameter with save check velour and check if and also do it on the local script with the parameter and check if the save check equals to something specific that nobody knows. This may be one thing you could do. And now another thing we can do is... So this is remote event. And the same goes from server to client with the fire to all clients and to a specific client. So next thing, we also have a bindable event. And just so you know, the functions don't have any features right now, so you can't use them. So bindable event, we just insert it here. If we search now for bindable on the server and on the client, you see we have here fire bindable event and receive bindable event. And also here, do something else, just some block that does something else. So, what we just did is communication between client to server or server to client. With bindable events, you can communicate between server script and server script or local script or local script. So for example, if I do fire bindable event to this event and just insert another script here, just say here, hello world, and do here receive bindable event string for output for example and then just do warn or print the text and let's add a little weight to here actually like weight one or two maybe so if we now press one we get the hello world so bindable event, and the same is for the client too, with firing and receiving. So bindable events are for communicating 
been the same type and remote events for the different type. So this is already was it. It was just some pre-explanation for my next tutorial idea that I have in my mind. So you also already know how bindable events work. And maybe you can also do something with this. And in the next tutorial, I am gonna try to show you how you can make a um, shop GY where you can purchase tools. But I need to see how long I need for this. But anyways, thanks for watching. And if you got any other ideas, for tutorials that are not too complicated because some stuff takes long some not so don't make it too hard please <laughs> maybe some basic features that i didn't do already but thanks for watching and see you bye bye